Today on Nerd Out, Jed. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're going to be talking about the the Jed protocol that's going to be releasing on Cardano at some point here in the future, uh, released by Cody. So let's jump into it. And I've said this is a discussion and not a deep dive because I'm not a Jed expert. Um, I'm just going to provide some of my thoughts. I haven't dug terribly deep into the math of the paper, but we're going to discuss it anyway. So what is what is Jed? It's a peer-reviewed uh, algorithmic stablecoin pegged to the USD and backed by ADA. So how it works is users send ADA to a smart contract and then that smart contract mints JED for them in their wallet. And that JED is worth a dollar and then they can always return that to the smart contract and get one dollar's worth of ADA, whatever that happens to be at the time. So it'll contact oracles to figure out the, the price conversion. Users can also send ADA to the smart contract to mint a, a coin called SHIN. And SHIN is the reserve coin, and it maintains the other side of the peg. So it helps keep the peg even when the price of the underlying token ADA fluctuates. And currently, their configuration is the reserve must hold four SHIN minimum for every one JED minted. So it's a four to one ratio of reserve to stable coin. And um, basically the smart contract will stop minting JED if the reserve ratio falls below 400%. So if there's not enough SHIN or people haven't provided enough ADA, uh, ADA for SHIN, then it doesn't allow you to mint JED. And also on the other side, the smart contract prevents minting SHIN if the reserve ratio grows above 800, which is too large. And at that point, it'd be reducing the amount of rewards that SHIN holders could get. So it kind of protects SHIN holders on that side. And I'll have a link down in the description, which has a, another video from, from Cody that kind of describes how this works a little more visually. I'm not going to go into that, but they, they can kind of describe it. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is Cardano Daily. You can find them on Twitter. It looks like Telegram. They put out this the other day on on Twitter. It kind of explains how Jed is different and better than UST. You may have been familiar with the giant meltdown and the stablecoin UST. So on that network, basically you can mint an unlimited amount of uh, Luna as people redeem their UST for Luna. So as people make UST and they burn the UST for Luna, it can cause it to lose its peg and then Luna just inflates um, and it inflated to, you know, kind of an infinite exponential amount. And that's kind of what happened a few weeks ago is um, Basically, people got afraid that their UST was going to lose the peg, and that caused a snowball effect of it to lose its peg even further. And so people were like, I got to get out now to at least get something. And so then they ended up with Luna that was continually going down in value. So on the on the Jed side, it works differently. Um, Luna was, there's, there's no fixed supply of Luna. Um, on the Cardano side, there will only ever be 45 billion ADA. So it is a fixed supply. There is a maximum supply and Jed can't change that. Um, so in, on this diagram, it talks about what happens when the stable coin loses its peg. So on the Jed side, it can still lose its peg, uh, but what happens is it just kind of stays depegged until either enough reserve comes in, it can regain its peg, um, or the price of ADA goes back up. Um, so it can regain its peg that way. And also on the UST side, what happened was the people that got out early when it depegged got more of their money out of it. So people that saw it go down to 95 cents and said, forget it, I'm out. 
they left with their 95 cents for every UST on the dollar. When when Jed depegs, every holder of Jed gets the same haircut across the board. So there's no idea of a, a bank run on this side, which is kind of a, a really interesting and, and unique scenario that can happen. So how is Jed better? We talked a little bit about this. It's heavily collateralized, 400 to 800% more. That means that ADA can go down quite a bit before there's any, any depegging of the Jed coin from the US dollar. Um, also, there's some risk on the shin side, so, but you're rewarded for taking that risk. So when you buy shin, it's, it's essentially like taking out a leveraged long against um, the price of ADA. So you're, you're kind of betting that over time, the price of ADA is going to go up. And so you can take a, a very long, long position in that and you get some of the fees when everybody trades into or out of this, this contract from Jed to ADA, ADA to Jed. And so I like this chart kind of down in the in the lower right hand corner. It very simply explains what can be done when the reserve ratio is at a given given scenario. So when it's between these ideal peg or ideal reserve ratio of between 400 and 800 percent, you can mint and burn Jed. You can also mint and burn Shin. So either people on either side of this can go into the contract, and either side is allowed to come out of the contract. Uh, when it's above 800%, you're not allowed to mint new shin, and that's to protect the existing shin holders from getting diluted too much. So if everything enters a super bullish market and, uh, you know, ADA is rocketing to the moon, it's not going to allow additional people to come in here and get some of those gains. The people who got in early to shin, they're going to be the ones that get rewarded here. Um, so they can burn and take their gains. They can lock in their, their gains as ADA, but no new holders are allowed to mint new shin at that point. Um, on the Jed side, you can always uh, mint and burn uh, mint and burn Jed. When the ratio falls below 400, um, this is kind of actually bad for the shin holders. They get locked in. They're stuck. Um, they can't pull their funds out for ADA. So they're, they're stuck there and their funds are what's holding the peg when it drops below 400%. Um, also, you're not allowed to mint new Jed because obviously there's not enough collateral to back it. But you can still burn Jed. So you can always, um, the nice thing about Jed is you can always get out of it. Um, so the, the Jed holders get priority and the shin holders take most of the haircut when when things are losing its peg. So that's that's one of the good things on the the Jed side. But, you know, if ADA is rocketing downward, you're not allowed to to mint more of it. So only the first people that saw that coming and got in early and minted their Jed get the safety of holding that stable coin in a, in a very much down market if, if things are falling off the cliff. So that kind of protects the coin from that side. It can't be infinite people pouring into the stable coin as the overall market heads downward. So let's talk a little bit about what's not in the paper. Um, there's no mention of DEXs, which was a little bit confusing to me because most of the paper discusses what happens going into or out of these smart contracts. And, you know, while that's fine for academic thought, that isn't the reality that this token is going to live in. The, the Jed Shin pair, you can do whatever you want with Jed. Jed will obviously be put onto DEXs and paired with other coins. There's nothing stopping you from doing the same with Shin, pairing it with something else, ADA or whatnot. So even though the contract is locking one side or the other from doing something, the reality is nothing stops them from doing those things on a DEX. And what I'd really like to see is some of the uh, researchers address those points of what happens when a DPEG happens and people are incentivized maybe to get into or out of one side or the other. They can't do it through the contract 
but there's still the ability to do that on a dex. How does that affect things? Can things go way below, you know, 400% or, or I guess on a dex, maybe somebody will just have way more percentage of what's in the contract because they took their tokens out of the contract, put it on a dex, they still control those tokens, but then, you know, essentially all the other participants are loading up who's ever left in that, uh, that dex pair. Yeah, so that's just kind of questions I'd like to discuss. Um, if you want to, jump in the in the comments or or hit me up on Twitter to uh, discuss what happens to Jed when things go out of balance, when things depeg, but Dex trading is not affected. Uh, some final thoughts. Uh, my overall opinion of Jed is a very robust algorithmic stable coin protocol. Um, in it also because it's decentralized it does not require trusting a centralized third party like the coinbase circle if you're trusting usdc um hyphen x if you're trusting the tether protocol so those protocols are all centralized so they're collateralized as far as we know so as far as any audits they have let us see tell us they are backed one for one by a dollar or dollar derivatives of some kind. So you could turn those tokens back in and in theory get the same dollar value. Uh, on our side, Cody is the company that's going to be issuing and managing the JED protocol and they will be collecting some fees, but it does remain decentralized. So if Cody happened to disappear or was somehow regulated, the protocol could and would still operate. It is just a smart contract. It's living on the blockchain. There will always be Shin and Jed locked in that contract. The minute it's published, it's not really able to be shut down unless you were able to shut down all of Cardano. Um, actually, that's a topic for another video, like how could you possibly shut down Cardano? Maybe we'll talk about that in the future. Um, so final thoughts, do your own research. Look at some of the links I've put down below. Manage your risk appropriately. Um, none of these things come without risk. Um, none of these things come without rewards either, so manage your risk appropriately. And with that, nerd out.